Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me thank uh, you most sincerely for uh, the invitation extended to me and the opportunity to speak to you in front of this audience uh, to talk about the efforts at independence of Catalonia. After all we've had today and what we have discussed are about all these big problems and challenges ahead of Europe and the European Union, well, it may sound uh, something of minor interest to have a Catalan person to talk about our problems and our cause, having heard about such big problems in Europe. But uh, this minor issue is also of importance. Uh, maybe uh, minor issues uh, can be even more important than the big issues. Uh, in this uh, minor issue, there are also questions we have to answer along the lines of European basic values and uh, the rules of democracy. Let me also make clear that here now I'm speaking as a Secretary General of the European Free Alliance and not as the Secretary in charge of foreign and EU affairs of the Catalan government. All the more because the Spanish Constitutional Court sees it different from the Federal Constitutional Court which has its seat in Karlsruhe. I don't want to go into more detail uh, regarding this topic, but the Spanish Constitutional Court accepted a lawsuit of the Spanish government against our foreign ministry, which means uh, that the structure and the functions of my secretariat have uh, been put on ice, at least until a valid decision will be taken. And this means, so to say, uh, that I've been put on ice as the uh, Secretary of the Catalan Government, but not as Secretary General of the European Free Alliance, and not as a free citizen either. Hence, I'll express myself absolutely freely regarding the political situation in Catalonia. I will make use of my paper because I don't want to forget anything. And uh, it's also uh, not so easy to do the speech in German, and I want to be very precise. Well, if we consider our continent uh, nowadays from a pro-European perspective, the EU at the moment is faced with irritating political tendencies, questioning values uh, which have enabled a peaceful Europe with growing cohesion and long periods of wealth for six decades. We have observing with concern how everywhere in Europe a populist nationalism are cropping up time again. This is a challenge uh, which needs coordinated transnational answers in solidarity. Uh, before mentioned nationalistic movements aim at uh, more strengths of their own countries, uh, and consider their own social environment and strong national institutions as the sole solution of the complex problems of the EU. They want to return to the situation of the borders before the Schengen Agreement. 
Yeah. Humanitarian uh, cases of emergency like the refugee crisis at the doors or within the EU are perfect excuses for nationalistic populisms to intensify their patriotic rhetorics to question common advantages of the European integration and to, to hold Brussels responsible for the unhappiness of citizens. Many European governments mixing up national interests with national egotism or even with electoral interests run behind such populisms and thus weaken the basic ideas of Europe. Thus, important achievements of European integration, like the Schengen Convention, are shaken. The people rather look away if uh, the governments of some member states act uh, close to the acceptable limits of our basic rights anchored down in the European treaties. In view of this phenomenon, in the European Free Alliance, we find with surprise that uh, some due to lack of uh, prudent analysis, uh, put uh, the rise of nationalistic populisms in Europe uh, at equal footing with the challenge of upsurging grassroots democratic movements which are more open uh, for the creation of new states on the old continent, like, for example, the political movements in Scotland or in Catalonia. For a few, week, uh, a few weeks ago already, for example, the French Prime Minister, Manuel Valls, spoke about the most important challenges ahead of Europe, and in the same sentence he mentioned the fight against globalized terrorism and literally the separatisms in Scotland and in Catalonia. If uh, we can talk about commonalities at all, then the only thing is that these uh, democratic uh, movements for independence have in common with nationalistic populist movements the dissatisfaction of citizens which is channeled successfully. The reasons are very different though, and the goals are opposing one another. Some see the necessity of a, share of a shared own statehood within Europe in order to master global challenges successfully. Other ones see their statehood jeopardized and fear a weakening of the national institutions. Some start from a bourgeois and integrative concept of the nation, whilst the other ones uh, think this is something excluded. Catalonia, the country I come from, is a small and dynamic country in southern Europe, which elected um, his, its uh, 130th president a few weeks ago. Catalonia's uh, first president, Berenguer de Cruelles, was in office between 1359 and 1362. These figures illustrate that uh, Catalonia is not about a new idea or a newly founded country, but that it has created for itself its collective awareness and its own political institutions in the course of many centuries. At the same time, Catalonia is a very versatile country in which people with very different origin live together. With a total population of 7.5 million inhabitants, Catalonia, in the first decade of this century, received 1.5 million people from other countries and uh, with a high degree of political will we achieved a high level of integration living together. 
Catalonia's uh, citizens have committed themselves in a process of independence during the past three years. And in the following, I want to summarize uh, the characteristic features of this process. First, it's about a democratic movement. The uh, Catalan democratic movement is hard to understand from outside, and it's so complex because the Spanish central government has rejected this movement at any time and thus makes political negotiations impossible. That's the first difference to Scotland. Although there is a political process taking place in Catalonia, which has always taken place within the scope of democratic rules, there is no signal sent out by the Spanish side which could enable a dialogue. During the last period of office, the Catalan Parliament and Catalonia's government have tried in vain to agree with the central government on a referendum for the independence of Catalonia which should be jointly agreed and binding. On the 9th of November 2014, given the big pressure of the citizens' movement, we could hold a non-binding poll within our narrow legal and political possibilities, which wouldn't be binding, and a broad majority voting in favor of independence. In retrospect, uh, this poll had the result that the Catalan Prime Minister and two of his ministers were called before the law court which makes us assume that Spain does not tolerate a situation in which a politician listens to the opinions of his citizens, which is unacceptable for Catalonia. After all what happened, Catalonia for the first time in recent history has gained a parliamentary majority in favor of independence and a government which has received the democratic mandate to enable independence. The parliamentary majority for independence resulted from the last election in September 2015 under a record turnout and this took place totally peacefully and after intensive public debates about the perspectives of independence. Hence, we are talking about a process which is supported by a democratic majority and uh, we, we even have to ratify this after 18 months' time by going uh, to the ballot box, which we introduced as our own rule. Despite the hostile attitude of Spain preventing the Catalans from deciding on their own future independently, Catalonia shows a lot of understanding of the concept of um, the European Union and uh, fully agrees with the democratic and peaceful actions in line with European values. The legitimacy of the process of independence of Catalonia is not only based on a development which has always taken place within the scope of democratic parameters and thus with the full support of the population, but it's also based on the fact that all former attempts at achieving an agreement with the successive governments in Spain regarding satisfactory integration of Catalonia within Spain. This was not crowned with success. Spain neither accepted the reality of a Catalan nation nor the fact that Catalon Catalonia is a political differentiated essence within the Spanish state and thus has a right of self-determination. In other words, 
Spain has never understood its own reality, namely that it's about a state composed of various nations which should be able and talk with one another at equal footing, in equal right. This has closed many doors to dialogue and it made the path ever narrower. Rajoy's government did not uh, cave in to the request of Catalonia to hold a referendum on independence. They have always been unyielding to this request, although 80% of the Catalan population have been for the referendum. The representative institutions of our country, the Catalan Parliament, the Catalan government and the majority of the local governments in Catalonia have also been of a binding referendum. <coughs> But all attempts came to nothing, and this led to the current situation. Driven by the democratic will of the Catalans, we get closer to independence based on a parliamentary majority. And at the moment we are preparing the necessary laws and um, structures and institutions which we need for an independent country, always under the condition that uh, the population fa uh, votes in favour of it. There is no doubt whatsoever regarding the actions of the government in legitimation legitimacy. There is no doubt because of the parliamentary majority. It's also a political process which looks to Europe and to the outside world. The Catalan Republic will be a European Republic, just due to our geographic position, but also given our history and our will in Catalonia. The majority of the Catalan society is in favour of Europe, and in the European integration it sees the right path to connect our progress with the progress of Europe. To be a Catalan means for us to be European. Therefore, we couldn't understand if Europe in the future was to rule out an independent Catalan Republic excluding it from the Union because a grassroots democratic process made the country establish its own state and always in tune and in line with the uh, democratic basic values of Europe. Despite some selfish um, voices conjuring up such a situation, we are optimistic that this will not happen for a simple reason. Uh, Catalonia, standing outside the European Union, would be of no use for anyone, even for Spain. We want independence from Spain, but not from the EU. We want to be sovereign, to decide freely with whom we want to share our own statehood. And for us it is clear that we want to share our sovereignty and our solidarity predominantly with our European partners. It's about a strife for independence, which is not the same like a nationalistic process. I think it would be a mistake to mix up the Catalan movement with a classical case of nationalistic demands. It is possible to be in favour of independence without being a nationalist. And that is true for a large majority of the Catalans indeed, Catalans who want independence. As a matter of principle, we want an independent country to create a social justice, which in the current framework at the moment is not possible and is not enabled.
Catalonia, belonging to the Spanish state, also has its cost, not only regarding cultural and language recognition, but also with a view to economic process and social justice. There are symbolic costs, but also material costs incurred. If Catalonia could completely act like a state, we would have the necessary means and resources to strengthen our economy and to improve our public services. Spain uh, exploits a uh, major portion of our resources, as you know, and they hardly leave us room for action when it comes to political decision-taking affecting our possibilities of development. And all of us suffer from that, no matter whether we speak Catalan, Spanish or Romanian. No matter whether we were born in Catalonia, in other parts of uh, the Spanish state, or in Morocco, the independence movement in Catalonia goes beyond uh, the limits of language or the place of birth. We are not interested in where we are coming, but where we want to go there, to go jointly. We are linked by the idea to create a better country for all. And this idea has nothing to do with classical nationalism. And uh, the current Catalan democratic and peaceful revolution cannot be understood in this light. In Catalonia, we do something what we could call a radical democratic political experiments. There is a strong citizens' movement uh, right across all strata of society, driving the representative organs of our country to create a new state within Europe. Achieving independence is very complicated. Having to achieve it against the resistance offered by a state is even more protracted. We are fully aware of that. Hence, uh, we need a lot of talent and creativity, also political sensitivity, social cohesion, democratic uprightness and credibility will be needed to explain ourselves in front of the international community. Our political experiment, as I've just uh, illustrated, should be no reason for concern, least in the interest of the EU. It should rather be considered a chance for Europe and the European Union as a chance to approach the democratic demands of the 21st century and as a chance to rely on a reliable partner in southern Europe, also in the future, with Catalonia. Thank you for your attention.